Blue Sky Studios. Now that's a name you probably haven't heard in a good few months. The studio was always a bit of an underdog. They made Ice Age and never really eclipsed it again, literally peaking at step one. But even still, while we've covered in the past all the big wigs, Sony, DreamWorks, Pixar, Disney, this will be the first covering of a canceled movie from a canceled studio. Blue Sky collapsed as a company back in April of this year, and their last film ever was Spies in Disguise almost a year ago. But of course, in the before times, there were other plans. And the deconstruction that did happen interrupted a couple of projects too. And today we're talking about one of those that could have breached the surface. Have you ever heard of a project called Nimona before? Nimona was a planned film by Blue Sky, surprise surprise, that was supposed to come out on February 14th, 2022. Though the IP itself already exists, and it's dumb. In its original form, it is a fantasy webcomic by one Noel Stevenson being adapted over to the film medium through this studio. The plan was the film was going to be directed by Patrick Osborne, previously directing a handful of shorts, two of which were nominated for Academy Awards and Feast won. He also has been doing some animation work for Bolt, Tangled, Wreck-It Ralph and Big Hero 6. Still, it's a full-length directorial debut, and the writing would come down to Mark Haynes, working prior on, uh, these in the writing department, and as additional crew for all of these. I guess it's kind of a gamble on a new team, but there is an award under their belt. I won't be too elitist off the bat, it's just some new territory with a project that's already won its awards. Hmm. But maybe that's just what makes Blue Sky... Blue Sky. Risk. Whatever the case, in June 2015, everything was kicked into motion. 20th Century Fox and Blue Sky Studios first purchased the film rights to the critically acclaimed graphic novel Nimona. And as for the plot of the movie, unknown. Or at least, that's what my first source says. But we've got loads of sources, and you can check them all out in the description if you're hungry for more. But here's what some of them have to say. Nimona is an impulsive young shapeshifter with a knack for villainy, who teams up with a mad scientist, Lord Ballister Blackheart, a villain with a vendetta. As sidekick and supervillain, Nimona and Lord Blackheart are about to wreak some serious havoc. Their mission? To prove to the kingdom that Sir Ambrosius Goldenloin and his buddies at the Institution of Law Enforcement and Heroics aren't the heroes everyone thinks they are. But as small acts of mischief escalate into a vicious battle in the hopes to expose the ruler of the kingdom, Lord Blackheart realises that Nimona's powers are as murky and mysterious as her past, and her unpredictable wild side might be more dangerous than he is willing to admit. Ooh. There is, of course, the entire lore of the webcomic one can go to for more plot details, going on the assumption that this movie is a more direct adaptation. So in order to get the full grasp of what this movie could have been, I'll give you the full backstory of the webcomic. Not through full plot spoilers, but I'll give you a little background detail and a production timeline too. Why not? 2012 is the original, original creation of Nimona, being published on Tumblr by Noel Stevenson. Beginning as a collection of one and two page comics, Stevenson has said that at the start, they had no idea what Nimona was when they started it, and that it was still experimental. Even still, soon afterwards, an agent reached out to them, and while still being at school, she learnt her agent had sold Nimona to the publisher Harper Collins. Beginning publication in June of 2012 and doubling as Stevenson's senior thesis, this comic then ran from June 2012 to September 2014, with an end that had been realised from the very start. And when finally reaching that point, Stevenson found it to be both satisfying and a little sad. And now we're back to 2015 with that Blue Sky film adaptation setting up. So what is the more detailed plot? Well, I won't spoil the actual ending, but as a general overview of the source material, with a few more details in the film synopsis alone, it goes as follows. Ballister Blackheart is a former knight turned low-grade villain whose evil plots are routinely foiled by his nemesis, Sir Ambrosius Goldenloin of the Institution of Law Enforcement and Heroics. The two men were once friends, or perhaps more, but they fell out and Ballister lost an arm in a fight with Goldenloin and now has a mechanical arm. Cause yes, the world of Nimona is one that combines both medieval and futurisms, mixing magic and mad science. Ballister was ejected from the institution because of his lost arm and became a villain. Nimona, our titular protagonist, is a teenage shapeshifter who breaks into Ballister's lair one day and anoints herself as his sidekick. Ballister is a mastermind but is reluctant to kill and carefully follows his own moral code, which frustrates Nimona, who is smart but also conniving and 
needlessly violent. While the initial chapters follow Nimona and Ballister's adventures and growing friendship, eventually Nimona's bloodlust puts her and Ballister into conflict with Golden Loin. I'm really surprised it's not Golden Lion, but I'm pretty sure it's Golden Loin. The Institute wants Nimona dead and instructs Golden Loin to do the deed. All the while, Ballister wants to protect Nimona and bring down the corrupt organization. And Nimona has her own vengeful plans. Or as the creator describes it, man's new assistant doesn't care for his ex. But anyway, those are the best details of the plot we can muster. How was it actually planned to be adapted? Well, for a start, two cast members were set in stone. Nimona was to be played by Chloe Grace Morez of the Poker House and Kick-Ass fame. And Blackheart was covered by Riz Ahmed from Rogue One and Nightcrawler. None of the other characters had known castings. And actually, a good bit of details were lost at this point. Apparently, there was once a good chunk of footage to bounce off of that has since been taken down. We do have this footage, but this is 40 seconds long. And that's it. As production continued over the next two years, this insider knowledge stayed on the inside. Also at this same time, 2015 still, Harper Collins published the completed comic as a young adult graphic novel in May, winning all sorts of awards that I don't recognize. But there's loads of them. The Eisner Award, Sybil's Award, Cartoonist Studio Prize, all sorts. And you know the drill. Come subscribe, look at those statistics, hit the bell. Here's my other links. The Facebook one's new. Yada yada yada. And come 2016, Nimona was adapted into an audiobook. And hey, that one actually followed through. Featuring the voice work from Rebecca Soller, Jonathan Davis, Mark Thompson, January Lavoy. Is that really, was that first name January? Wow. Natalie Gold, Peter Bradbury, and David Pitu. Coming together at a runtime of two hours and 17 minutes. Meanwhile, for the movie, in June 2017, Fox finally scheduled Nimona to be released on February 14th, 2020. And we have more insider reports of what was happening with the project from around this time. If you couldn't already tell from the source material, this story would have been one to breach some barriers on the big screen in regards to LGBT representation. There's only little spots here and there in kids' cartoons these days, but this would have been one of the biggest examples of really diving into doing it properly, and the same was planned with this adaptation. Employees would later reveal to outlets like BuzzFeed that, in an innovative move, Nimona was to depict a same-sex relationship between two of the major characters, and that I love yous were to be exchanged in one scene in addition to a same-sex kiss. Not to mention, the starring role was that of a gender non-conforming female, a literal shapeshifter. It's a style of characters that we just don't see given the full theatrical treatment, or at least not yet or in abundance. And then, in March of 2019, Disney came in and inquired all of Fox. Did they kill the film? No. In fact, things were still going ahead, even with all the boundary pushes included. This would have then been the very first Disney film to include a same-sex kiss and all of that. Absolutely revolutionary in how it could have changed the lives of kids watching it had it actually come out. Then in May 2019, the film was delayed to March 5th, 2021. Following Disney's acquisition of Fox in August of 2019, the Walt Disney Animation Studios president Andrew Milstein was named co-president of Blue Sky Studio, serving alongside Rob Baird. And other members were switched around, with the likes of the Pixar president Jim Morris also taking a supervisory role as key Blue Sky management Brian Keane left the company. They were shuffling about, basically. With Disney's plans going forward to keep the studio going as a third feature animation studio under their belt. Though they also went silent about the company, indicating not so good odds on continuing operations. In November 20. 2019, Nimona was again delayed to February 14th, 2022. And on the output front of the studio, Spies in Disguise made its debut, distributed under Disney in December 2019. It didn't do so well. Grossing $66 million at the domestic box office and $171 million worldwide, the hope was that a franchise would be spurred by the star power of Will Smith and Tom Holland, but clearly it wasn't the case. But the studio hasn't gone down just yet. 
through all of 2020, there was word that the film would be released in 2022. Noel Stevenson even stated in June 2020 that the film was still happening, and repeated that notion in an August 2020 podcast. However, in February 2021, it was reported that Disney was closing Blue Sky Studios that April, and Nimona the film adaptation was cancelled due to the shutdown of that studio. But it was worse than that. Stevenson said it was a sad day and that she wished the best for everyone who worked at Blue Sky Studios, but we've been hearing the timeline of events here, and the film had been in the works for six years. Production was so very much long underway by this point. And though we don't actually have a lot of footage, we have reports that Chloe Grace Morez, for example, had actually recorded about half of their lines already. And that the film only had about 10 months of production left until full completion. Yes, that's right. By the time the studio was shut down, Nimona was left at about 75% complete, which is just devastating. And beyond just the artistic side of things, the realities of the shutting down was also harsh on its employees with approximately 450 employees impacted by the closure. Disney did say they would consider some open positions at other studios, though all of their other studios were based thousands of miles away on the west coast, so who knows how that turned out. As for the reason of the closure, it wasn't due to the strong LGBT tones of course, as much as you can't really trust the mindset that there's room for everyone under the rainbow from Disney. I mean, even another Blue Sky employee pointed out that Disney doesn't have a great track record of making queer inclusive media, though they did note that there's no clear connection between the film's content and the studio's closure. Instead, it all came down to the fact that COVID continued to ravage through the months. Add on to that the response to Spies in Disguise, which, while it was critically successful by critics and fans, didn't make enough money at the end of the day. And as a spokesperson explained, given the current economic realities, after much consideration and evaluation, we have made the difficult decision to close filmmaking operations at Blue Sky Studios. Don't know why he sounds like that, but he does. What an incredibly unsatisfying end for the studio and the movie. Though there was still hope for the movie to live beyond closure, but first, here's some thoughts from the time of this shutdown announcement. Blue Sky was filled with funny, talented, passionate, creative artists who welcomed you in as family. I'm so sad you won't get to see Nimona. We were doing something pretty great. As said by Pamela Ribbon, who wrote the script for Moana and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Others stated it didn't look like anything else in the animated world, but they believe it will never be completed and released. Former animator Rick Fournier stated the studio was very, very close to getting the film finished, but that they found out it simply was not doable. But there was still a chance for Nimona, as it was soon shopped around to other studios in the hopes that someone else would pick it up to finalize those last little bits. In June 2021, May Rood, a writer for Out, said that she still held out hope that this last film will find its way back to life somehow. Fans, of course, are definitely hoping that this will be the case. The Blue Skies library and IP will remain part of Disney now, and that can even be seen from the recently announced Ice Age series for Disney+, Plus. but it's also now clear that the series won't be produced at Blue Skies, so perhaps that glimmer of hope for Nimona has faded away too. Losing Nimona, I hope I've been saying this right this whole time by the way. Losing Nimona is a massive loss for the industry. Sure, sometimes there are really cool ideas we just want to see. Sometimes it's representation of another culture that could be really cool to see, shared around for people who might not be so familiar. But sometimes a movie like this could have had an astronomical effect on the children of today who maybe need a story like this, to see a part of themselves up on the big screen. Nimona would have been a major first for Disney, even if it wasn't technically a film they made themselves. But still, none of the company's past animated films had featured a queer lead character, or any explicit depictions of queer romance at all. Sure, you have those half assed attempts from the minorist of characters that make a headline every year, and I guess we're slowly getting better, what with a gay character in Jungle Cruise and Eternals doing its thing, but this would have been the project to truly break through the mold into an unabashed example of inclusion. Nimona Nimona has been hailed with many awards and highly praising reviews. It was written by a non-binary creator and represented the LGBT community's viewpoints in its most visceral and recent form. And losing a project like this could be 
one of the biggest disappointments in recent animation history for many people. Who knows what the final price tag would have been for Nimona. You can bet it wouldn't be cheap, but having no one take this project on seems like a missed opportunity for all involved and approached. Whatever the case, at the very, very least, the story continues on in both webcomic form, graphic novel, an audiobook too. The story might not be as mainstream as it could have been, reaching the most amount of people who need it most, but it exists. It's finished, and whenever the next big LGBT project brews, if it does get fully realized, let's just hope it proves all involved that this was the biggest loss these companies faced, without ever fully noticing. For now, maybe I should get into reading more. My name's been Taz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.